what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel man it's your boy god of war in this video we're gonna be doing something a little different on the channel man we're gonna be doing a tech review of the sony playstation dual cinch edge pro controller now i have owned this controller for over a year now so it's safe to say that i have put it through its paces gaming a lot i put plenty of hours into this controller so i'm going to give you guys my experience everything i like about the controller the things i don't like about the controller what it comes with all the features and quirks and just overall letting you know my opinion whether or not you should buy this controller if you were looking into get a pro controller for your playstation with that being said guys if you do enjoy this video and if you want to see more possible tech reviews on the channel man let me know by hitting that like button subscribe if you're new and let's get right into the review all right everybody so here's the controller in hand fits really nice in my hand it's not too big not too small no ditty <laughs> but yeah um for anybody with smaller hands the controller may seem a little too large in your hand um for me like i said it fits just fine unfortunately the only color it comes in is in white however on a few modded controller websites i've seen you can buy the dual sense controller they have uh, taken the original shell off and put different colored shells like purple red blue black gold whatever color fits your preference however on retail sites something like best buy it only comes in the color white now, as you can see this is the main reason why i bought the controller right here let me just get these thumbsticks off real quick in one second um main reason i want pro controller is because you can take this face plate off and the thumbsticks are easily removable like out of all the pro controllers i've seen me personally this is like the easiest way to remove a thumbstick where one has some drift on it you just pop it out swap a new one in and you're good to go now, now i have had some problems with the thumbsticks for the controller i'm gonna explain that a little more into detail when we get into the video when i really go in depth about the thumbsticks and if you're like me it can't play any game without the control free thumbsticks anymore then you're in luck it does fit the control free grips on the thumbstick as well so if you have a ps5 with thumbsticks already you can put those on this controller as well all right so we're gonna put this off to the side for a second show you everything else that comes in the box with it first things first it's gonna be this hard shell travel case really sturdy case man i'm talking about like if you drop this your controller is going to be fine the controller goes directly in it comes with these extra back buttons of uh, these paddles but i have the dumpies on there i'll show you those dumpies pieces later and it also has short and extended thumbsticks so if you didn't have control freaks but you wanted longer thumbsticks you can't do that you can do short or long thumbsticks now the controller does fit perfectly into this case it doesn't rattle around or shake it's a very snug fit um you can actually charge this controller through the case there's a little flap on the back here held down with velcro as you can see you can plug up your charging cable through the back of the case and charge the controller up on the go or keep it protected while it's charging now besides the case it also comes with this very durable long braided charging cable along with a cable lock on it uh to keep the controller in place so there's no accidental unplugs while you're playing the game and it's just your somebody walk past and rips the cable out it won't rip out your controller at least maybe a console but not the controller but the cable is long enough so if you did want to have a gaming session on the couch and you know have a long enough cable this cable is long enough and like i said you can't charge it through the case it's a locking tab so it's not going to come unplugged by accident and you can also just use directly the controller and charge it that way as well and as you can see i'm putting it on i'm locking it and it's just it's not going anywhere ain't no accidental unplugs when you're sitting there playing the game and then your controller just randomly unplugs on you all right on to the back now as you can see we do have the back buttons along with the trigger stops for the l2 and r2 uh we do have a long medium and short trigger pull for the thumbsticks i used to show one for something like an fps game like call of duty warzone and then the longer press for a racing game something like need for speed also if you're someone who likes to use the adaptive triggers they only work in the longest trigger press pull so if you have it set to the shortest or medium the adaptive triggers are not going to work and for the back buttons i'm running the half domes over the paddles because i like the tactile flicky feeling of it uh haven't had no issues with them so far easy to take in and out 
and as you can see i really have put this controller through the paces it has been a year of using this controller and as you can see the little grippy area of the controller has started to come up on both sides a little concerning because i know sony is not going to offer any type of replacement for that so i have to find some type of aftermarket uh grips to put there when i have to eventually peel those off maybe the control free grips if they do fit all right, so that's everything that comes with the controller you get the controller itself the travel case and a really nice charging cable as well now you can buy extra thumbsticks in theory from sony however that has been more of a challenge than you would think as you can see i have one right here however i had to buy this off of ebay because you cannot find this in stock in any store or any website whether it be playstation amazon best buy wherever you cannot find it sony has dropped the ball on this just like they dropped the ball on the initial ps5 release they have not been able to keep these things in stock so i have had to rely on buying these from ebay and hoping not to get scammed by somebody because of course there are scalpers buying these up and selling these on ebay same thing with the charging cable and the uh locking cable impossible to find on their store and barely anywhere on a recent website like ebay or macari or anything like that so besides that those are really my only two problems with the controller is it's really hard to find the cable if i lose this cable or getting replacement thumbsticks now i actually did order two thumbsticks once i saw that these things are hard to find in store all right guys so we're here on the playstation 5 we have the dual of course hooked up to get into the menu to customize all you have to do is hold down one of the fn buttons on the controller and then press the start button and open up customize profile and here you can see i have a few of my profiles already made but i also have plenty more over here for different games like just a lot of games i have different control layouts for but you can only have three equipped at a time it's not the end of the world but i wish i can just have as many as i want to switch to at a time but of course there's only <laughs> three buttons you can get to of course the default whichever one you have set here here and here and when, of course you go into the profile you can also of course adjust the button customization so you see how like i have my two back buttons one is l1 one is r3 this is for my uh mod warfare warzone setup everything else is pretty much the same but you can change the buttons if you want to like say i can change the x to any button i want on my controller uh you can do that so for your left and right sticks we actually have the stick sensitivity and dead zone menu for both of the left and right thumbsticks here you can adjust the sensitivity curve curve adjustment dead zone adjustment so if you have a lot of stick drift on your controller on the thumbstick you can adjust it up and down currently mine is fairly low because i do have some new thumbsticks in the controller right now but you can change it for the left and right thumbstick and then of course sensitivity curve you have a couple presets you have quick precise steady digital and dynamic now for the sensitivity curve i haven't really got too deep into adjusting the curve for the controllers uh for many of the games it is quite a learning curve no pun intended but to really choose the correct uh preset that you want for that on each thumbstick some games i feel like i need it, some games i don't feel like i need it but most games they have uh left and right stick adjustment sensitivity that you can do in game so for most games that's really not needed next we have the trigger dead zones where you can adjust the dead zones for your left and right your r2 and l2 so as you can see i have one set to 40 0 to 40 other one have set 0 to 35 you just have to play with this a little bit to see what fits right for you um again just like the sensitivity curve is another learning curve you'll have to really get you know get really deep in the depth and figure out how to use this properly after that we have vibration sensitivity uh, i actually had it set off because most games i don't like the vibration but you can't have the vibration set on same thing for the adaptive triggers because of course this controller does have adaptive triggers some games support it some games don't support it but for the most part i do keep this uh off it says on right here but within call of duty it actually doesn't work i have the setting turned off in game as well now one thing i really like about this menu is when if i'm playing an old ps2 or ps3 game and say i don't like the button layout for that game like for example let's see this is bioshock uh i didn't like the layout 
so I changed up some of the buttons here and as you can see a lot of it's changed around like my R3 is my L2 my right stick is my L2 is like I, I didn't like the control layout for the game and I really couldn't change or customize how I wanted in game of course it is an old game so with this controller I'm able to do that on the fly so that's one of the things I really like about this game and of course I have all these other games I have different profiles for you may not know what the games are for but I, I know what each one is like there's Siege, this is Sniping for Warzone, Bioshock Infinite, COD Warzone, World Coast, Road Company, uh, this one I believe is the Castillo Protocol, Battlefield, God of War Ragnarok, X Defiant, GTA, and then Overwatch, Fortnite, and then another Warzone Modern Warfare 2 preset. Alright, so you guys seen the controller, uh, give you my final thoughts. I would say it's a great controller. I do put a lot of hours in game with it. I do enjoy the controller. I would give it a nine or 9.5 out of 10 only because right now the thumbsticks are nearly impossible to find in store or for direct from PlayStation website. The only place I've able to find them is a third party website like eBay or some other scalper selling them online some people are selling it for crazy prices like they were with the ps5 and the ps portal other people are selling it a little bit closer to msrp so your mileage may vary uh, but if you were interested in the controller keep that in mind that's the one thing that you have to keep in mind back of your mind when you're uh, looking to buy this controller along with the charging cable and again like i said if you wanted it in another color instead of the standard white color you can look for it on modded controller websites you can get it without the mods you, if you want just another color you can buy it from modded controller websites as well if you didn't want that basic white color on it so i might do the same thing uh, one thing i would say again if you were interested in this controller it is uh, msrp for 200 dollars if you can find it in stock and store but i believe it's also hard to find in store sometimes and to stack up on the thumbsticks because i would say i've had the control of over a year now and the thumbsticks have taken quite a beating over the years a lot of r3 slide canceling on call of duty warzone so it held up a year at least the thumbsticks some people's probably haven't held up as long as i might have but um the stake drift is actually what prompted me to make this video so if anybody else was looking into buying this controller uh can get a perspective from someone who has owned it for a year and if someone from sony somehow is watching this video on this small youtube channel i just want to say please 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 find a way to keep these thumbsticks in stock please there is no way and i should have to go on ebay and pay some scummy scalper extra money just to get a piece for my 200 dollars controller that should be in stock on the shelves at the store that was one of the main things advertised with this controller we're not gonna go into a whole rant and tangent about it but please someone figure that out at sony other than that guys if you did enjoy this video and you actually like seeing this tech review on the channel man again this is something different from just straight gaming um let me know in the comment section what you think man hit the like button if you enjoyed uh love each and every one of y'all and i'll see you in the next video peace